This week I received a delivery from Flywoo of a number of their new products. Now I'm not going to cover everything that I received today because there is a new drone, a Flylens 75, which we're going to take a look at in the future. But there's also some things like new antennas for O3, a box for their action camera, some new Express RS receivers, as well as two new AIOs. And what I'm going to do today is give you a bit of an overview. Now this isn't a review. Just to be crystal clear, what I'm simply doing is giving you an overview of the new products. I was sent these to take a look at for free. I've not been paid to make this video they've not seen this video more than anything it's just a bit of a hey fly where we've got this new stuff you might want to check it out anyway let's get on with it and let's take a look at what's in this box okay so we've got a bunch of stuff here and i would usually do like a video for each but there's too much here for me to go through there's also really not a video in some of this stuff so what i thought i'd do is do it as a bit of an overview and I may then swing back around and do a dedicated video, especially on the flight controllers themselves a little bit later. Now, we've got you a complete mixed bag of stuff. What we're going to start with is this box, because for those who saw the channel a few weeks ago, you've seen I did a review of the Flywoo Action Camera. They make this as a naked camera. It's a kit or it's a set ready to go. This is based on the GoPro Hero 9, but you can get it on the 9, the 10, the 11, the 12. They do all of the latest versions. Now, what they've released is this 3D printed storage box for that. So let me just push that out the way. It is 3D printed by Flywoo themselves. It is a storage box to hold this camera and its accessories in. You can see there on the top, the pattern in there from the infill. Looking on the top quality, I have to say, overall, the print quality is decent. No complaints at all. Nice rough bottom, nice rough top. Obviously, they've printed the top and the bottom separately. They put it together with a bolt through the hinge there and there. We've got bolts down there on the latches. They're nice and tight. So yeah, no complaints at all. Obviously, if you had a 3D printer and a design, you could print your own, but if you don't, the box is available. It is designed to take the action camera. Let's try it and see what happens because I haven't done this yet. Let me just take the cable off the back. Um, does that go in that way? I'm assuming it does. Does it go in that way? That does. Now I have the bracket on the bottom. So it's not designed to go that way with the bracket pointing up. Yeah, it definitely doesn't want to go that way. It is designed to go that way, but that sticks up. Um, right, okay. So the first thing is the box won't take the camera with the bracket fitted. Anywho, moving on, we have the area for the screen, which slots in the back there just like that. There is then space for some of the accessories. So you've got these cables here. Um, there's some holes that you can shove them into there. Like that. And then there's the, you can put that. And then there you go. It's all kept nice and safe. Price-wise, the little box comes in at $24.99, and it does have space down in the sides there for your ND filters as well. But the only complaint is, as I've shown, is that it doesn't take the camera with the bracket fitted. You're going to have to take it off to put it in the box. Anywho, moving on, we're next going to take a look at these two. Now, there's two separate things here. We've got two ExpressRS receivers and we have some antennas for the DJI O3 system. Now, these are actually quite interesting because there's three different kinds of antennas here. If I just flip them up, what we have is what they call the Bipolar Dual 5 gigahertz UFL with 150 mil, Bipolar Dual Band 2.4 gigs, and Bipolar Dual 5 gigs 90 mil. So those two basically are the 5 gigs only, and this one is dual band. So the idea of these two is you have an antenna here that you can use to replace the antenna that is included with your DJI O3E unit, but rather than the antenna be dual band, this is single band. So if you're not using the O3 with the DJI FPV remote controller, it only uses five gigs and as such, you don't need a dual band antenna. 
and that is the option that they're offering here. But what you have is a dual 5 gigs antenna rather than a dual, dual band antenna. Now this is the 90mm length. You can see there it's labelled dual 5.8 by Polar. And then we have a longer version available as well. Let's just get that out of the packet. There you go. That is the 150 mil, which is nice to see, actually. Again, 5 gigs dual input. Can't comment on the performance. Um, I'll be honest, when it comes to 03, I haven't really seen a single antenna other than something like the TrueRC Xs that are very directional that offers much improvement. But if you break your antenna or you want to go for a dedicated single band antenna, you can with that one there. Then we have the dual dual, which is the dual band 2.4 and 5 gig. Let's just get the packet out for this. Now, what you will notice on this is that the antenna is larger, and that is because the elements on it are larger. It is more like the size of the antenna that originally comes with the O3E unit. So again, you're going to want to select this one if you're using the DJI FPV remote, because that is going to allow the dual band operation, because O3 with the DJI FPV remote uses 2.4 gigs for the remote and telemetry and five gigs for the video. And if I just pop that side by side there, both really nice length, 150 mil. So it's gonna be good to have an antenna like this. So if you were looking to have something to replace the original O3 antenna, but on a longer length, that is definitely worth a look. I have to say, overall looks really quite nice now these antennas are available for nine dollars 99 each it doesn't matter which one you choose the price is the same so you've got the dual the dual 5 gig only 150 or the dual 5 gig 90 if you then just take a look at through some of the images that they do show they have full specifications showing on the website which is quite nice giving you some nice images as an overview they do also have some radiation pattern images as well which is good to see they show the antennas there again showing you it there, just giving you an indication of what the setup is like, the composition of the antenna, and really just giving you an indication of what you're buying. Obviously, I have not tested these. I can't comment on what they're like compared to the original DJI one, but overall, I've got nothing to complain about here so far. Next, moving over to these. Now, we have two new receivers for Express LRS. We have the Flywoo TXCO 2.4 gigs EL24E and the EL24P. Now, you'll notice both of these say TCXO. That means they've got a temperature-controlled oscillator on board, which should mean they've got really decent performance with regards to the temperature stability and frequency accuracy. I'm not going to test that. I've pretty much stopped testing that on all the new Express LRS stuff. It's an issue that has basically disappeared now, as far as I'm concerned. Now, one of these comes in this box, like you see here, um, which is taped up. You can see the receiver in there. Wow, that is very small. So we are back into that one gram territory Express RS receiver with the tower antenna. Just looking at that, we've got a bind button down there. You can see the TXCO there, TCXO, sorry. And then you've got the Express LRS chipset on the back side there. It does have a little antenna down there for the Wi-Fi. I think I'll probably get it under the microscope in a minute just to give you guys a proper look. We'll do that with both of them so you can see them in a bit more detail. But yeah, overall, looks quite nice. And then we've got the EL24P version, which is external antenna, I suspect. I haven't looked, but if I was going to guess... Yes, there we go. So this comes in a packet with a few more accessories. Receiver is actually very similar sized. It just has a UFL instead of the built-in tower antenna. Other than that, it actually looks identical. So it's just, it's got the external antenna UFL instead of having the onboard tower antenna. Okay, so taking a look at the 24E version, first of all, this is the one with the built-in tower antenna. We can see our SX1281 there, which is our RF front-end chipset. There's no PA on this, so it's going to be standard telemetry power. You've got your crystal there, you've got your little button, and then you've got your tower antenna. 
and then we can see over here our RF filter so the tract comes out of the chipset through the RF filter into the main antenna and then you've just got a little LED over here a little capacitor down there and then you can see that they've labeled up the pads RT plus minus overall all looks very good if we then flip it over to the other side then we can see our ESP8285 we've got our voltage regulator down there crystal up here again some sundry components and our little wi-fi antenna located down there i'll be honest this is a very basic board nothing really interesting to see the only thing i'll comment on is the build quality looks good the soldering of the qfn there looks absolutely fine all the components look straight apart from that cap is a little bit off um but i'm not particularly worried about that and then on this side here yeah, everything looks good. Now, if we move over to the external antenna version, it is basically identical. I even think it's the same board. All they've done is rotated the UFL at 90 degrees on the board, which then gives you your input, and then you fit in on either side. So again, RSX1281, out through the filter, LED. It, it literally is the same. Components on this side look tidy. There's a bit of fluff there. And then flipping the board over again exactly the same all of the soldering looks good yeah really no complaints at all a very basic express rs receiver with the quality looks okay the only thing you're really seeing is is a bit of for me i'd just like to have seen a bit of a, like a sandpaper rub around the edge of the board before them being sent out it's a small thing i know Personally, I'd have just liked to have seen that tidied up a little bit before it was sent out to the customer. But you do have to take into account the price point here. Now, price-wise, these two little receivers come in at $16.99 for the EL24E, which is the version with the built-in antenna. And the version with the external antenna comes in at $17.99. That is above the lowest end pricing we've seen for some express rs receivers you can get them as low as 10 12 dollars but not with the tcxo remember it does have the temperature controlled oscillator on board finally we're going to take a quick look at these two aios now if we spin them over we have a groku f405 hd 1 to 2s 12 amp aio with express lrs built in this is a whoop board and then we've got the groku gn 745 45 amp aio which runs bl heli 32 and uses the mpu 6000 gyro this one uses the 42688 gyro now these are both 25 by 25 mountain pattern flight controllers and escs they're both aios so this one is obviously a whoop board designed for whoop applications it doesn't have any FPV built in, so there's no analog FPV on this. It's designed to be used with a digital FPV system, so HD0, DJI, or Avatar HD. If you take a look around the board, it is a 25 by 25 mounting pattern. We have our little USB C there for updating the firmware and connecting to Betaflight. You've then got all your other sundry components over here. There you can see your Express LRS chipset. Next to that is a little antenna for the Wi Fi. If I spin it over this side here, you can see that there's the antenna connect there for the uh, express rs system as well as the bind button then you've got your main flight controller in the middle your back and the rest of your components located around the sides you can see here we do have a plug and play harness for the flight controller as well we've got the our motor connectors that go around the sides and again it's going to be an ideal board for whoop applications now just jumping in a little bit closer to this board i gotta hold it steady because i am moving around a little bit here just to make sure that we get the focus Focus right now it is designed for digital as i've said earlier and it has a built-in 9 volt 2 amp back so it's going to be able to power things such as the dji 3 a unit no problem at all the flight controller also has a built-in barrow sensor built-in current sensor as well as i2c ports you can see down there sda and scl so you can use it with a gps if you wanted to you've then got all your additional io you've got your spare uarts down there it looks to be two uarts spare at the moment and there's also a dedicated s plus port if you wanted to use it reading the instructions although it does have that express rs built in so you're probably better using that there is also a wind bond flash chip there too which means it does have built-in black box storage which is up to eight meg Overall, it's a nice looking Whoop board. The specs say it weighs 4.9 grams. And if you're looking to build yourself a Whoop or replace a board that you've already got that's gone wrong, it's definitely going to be worth a look.
Next, moving over to the GN745. Now, this is still an AIO. It is still 25 by 25, but it is a much bigger flight controller. It weighs nearly twice as much, 9.4 grams. Now, this one isn't specifically designed for digital FPV. In fact, it has an analog OSD chip, which means you can use it with analog. You can use it with digital, though, because it does have up to seven UARTs. There is, though, no receiver built into this AIO. We have here a much bigger unit overall. So, for instance, it's based on the STM32 F7. The ESC on this is rated at 45 to 50 amp max and it is based off the MPU 6000 gyro, has a built in barometer up to seven UART, so that's fine. USB C over there, and as you can see, it has all the IO you need. All your ESC pads are located down there. You've then got additional IO around here, but there's a lot more plugs on this board compared to the other one. You've got plug there, plug there plug there, plug there. So again, a lot more of that IO is on headers compared to that other flight controller. This is going to be ideal for something like a three, three and a half inch, maybe four inch, something where you don't need that 40 or 50 amp standard ESC rating, something a bit smaller that you're going to want to be able to put a 25 by 25 AIO in. Now, price-wise, the first board, the Groku F405 HD 1-2S, is available for $69.99. And the last board we took a look at, which is the GN745, is available for $89.99. And I'll take a closer look at these in a dedicated video in the near future. Okay, so that is it for this one. I'm going to be covering the flight controllers again in a separate video with a bit more detail. And we're also going to be taking a look at this in a future video as well, which is the Flylens 75. Haven't even opened this one yet. If you're interested in seeing that, though, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you're interested in getting any of the stuff that you've seen here today, there will be a link in the description. It won't be an affiliate link. It's just a normal link. And if you want to check it out, it is down below. Now, that's pretty much it for me on this one. I hope you found it interesting. If there's any questions, put it down below and I will try and answer them. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.